Hello again, welcome back. Well, I had a uh, lovely weekend with my uh, my friends, but uh, for those, uh, anybody who was <laughs> watching the coronation, you know, the weather's been absolutely rubbish. And alas, the uh, forecast is also uh, rubbish to come for the next few days, uh, which is a bit of a shame because uh, I've said I want to get these uh, solar panels firmly installed on the roof. However, the good news is, well, it's news, but uh, although the weather was pretty rubbish over the weekend, there were, there were nice spots uh, in between the, all, the, uh, all the peeing down rain. And uh, hopefully that just continues. In fact, now it's not so bad outside right now, even though it should have been, uh, it was forecast to be raining all morning. So I'm hoping that the, uh, the, the weather forecast sort of <laughs> under promises and uh, reality over delivers. So let's uh, see. So, it's uh, 7 a.m. in the morning, and this is probably the earliest I've started work, but the reason being, uh, this was, <laughs> this what I'm just doing right now was not on the plan today, and the issue is that uh, the grip fill that I, uh, that I used, I uh, noticed that it's lift, lifting off on some places. Problem is that uh, it seems to have good torsion, torsion strength, there's no tensile strength, and while, you know, if it gets some wind under, underneath these panels, especially when the lid's up, you know, them flying off, uh, so I'm replacing, not every single moment, I'm just doing some tests, but uh, I'm actually trying to use some of the uh, epoxy, uh, uh, not epoxy, the polyurethane glue. Uh, the reason I'm not using, I've got some regular two-part epoxy, the reason I'm not using that is, yet, is because the problem being that, you know, the pieces of wood I'm using are flat and the boat is slightly curved, and, you know, that means there's going to be a bit of a gap, so that's why I was using grip fill originally, so there's, some, there's something to sort of fill that gap. Uh, the good thing about the polyurethane foam is it actually expands as it, uh, as it sets. There you can see how it's all sort of, it comes out, which is you know, not aesthetically very nice, but this is inside the box, so. So let's hope this works this time. If not, I'll have to revert to the two-part uh, epoxy. I think I mentioned it, I really don't want to be drilling holes, uh, not you know, well, there'd be about, what, almost 100 holes in there. M more for just the potential for leaks inside, uh, rather than anything else. So, it has stopped peeing down, which uh, it wasn't forecast to. It's now May, but we've definitely just had a very heavy April shower. And uh, if everything, if it stays dry this afternoon, I'm hoping that by the end of the day we will have some solar panels mounted on the roof. Not connected, but mounted at least. As you can see, I'm just finishing off the last few bits of remediating my, uh, remediating, should I say, the. Uh, the, the grip fill, the, or the lack of grip fill, uh, uh, these are all now sort of well, uh, well polyurethaned on, and hopefully they will, they will stick. So step one, drill the holes, and like all of this, I'm going to do uh, just one box uh, completely first to check that my measurements are correct before I, in case I muck all of them up. Well, it's on, but God, that was a faff. That's the trouble with uh, wood, you know, it's uh, as much as you measure that, uh, you know, if you a mill out, it doesn't line up with the, uh, with the pre drilled holes on the solar panels. Uh, so it should drill, drill like the bigger holes. Uh, <laughs> so I think the next ones I will drill slightly larger holes in the wood and uh, rather than going for, you know, a perfect fit, I will uh, give myself a bit of literal wiggle room.
Well, I couldn't have done it without Dave's help, but <laughs> that is absolutely wonderful to get in. Of course uh, you could. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of them, uh, the boxes of, you know, this, with it being solid wood, uh, the boxes have gone slightly screwed, which is why I had a bit of trouble and we had to drill, drill an extra hole in where, but they're all done and I said they're looking relatively straight and uh, which is a, a good thing once you're staring at them for all the time so that's brilliant now i just need to get them all wired up of course and that's going to be a job for another day i have to confess i am well chuffed with those how they've the alignments come out you can see the the silver lines there you know maybe as a millimeter so out but more or less they are they're bang on which would have been so annoying you know standing the tiller i mean i'm standing on the bow at the moment but standing the tiller and you could see one being totally wonky so yeah, that's, all that uh, all that work and uh, stress has been uh, has been well worth it. Well, after all his uh, this is this is Dave by the way. This is Dave provider Hi. provider of tools, provider of uh, the, the drill which would have I've been sunk in the past weeks. So it wasn't that, and provider of uh, installation services. So in thanks, we're having a glass of wine and a bit to we eat. We are indeed. And uh, it's tomorrow. Been it's been a tough job, but we've managed to do <laughs> yeah, it, and actually, now we have the reward. Yes, <laughs> and uh, tomorrow we'll be uh, wiring those things up, weather dependent. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Morning. Well, it's not the day after, it's the day after the day after, because uh, that glass of wine wasn't a glass of wine, and it wasn't a bottle of wine, and so yesterday I did do some work, but it wasn't uh, very productive, and being up on the roof, putting in wires and connections was uh, just beyond my, beyond my, uh, <laughs> beyond my motivation, that's for sure. Anyway, it's, uh, it's a couple of hours of sunshine, and before it, then it starts, <laughs> ironically, <laughs> apparently I'll finish, it's going to be raining for the foreseeable future, so uh, I'm not sure well the solar panels will be doing their job. Anyway, uh, so it's, the panels are now mounted, but I need to uh, connect them all up, so I have these things called MC4 connectors, which is what, uh, what are on the pre-installed on the panels, and I have some more to, to connect these up. So, uh, as it goes to a 48 fault factory, uh, these solar cells are, or panels, whatever, are, uh, they're nominal 24 volts, so I need to connect two in a series to get the 48 volts. And there are six of them, so there will be uh, three sets in parallel. That is the, uh, that is the design anyway. Well, a bit of fiddling about, and you can probably appreciate why I didn't want to do this slightly hungover, because uh, you have to concentrate on the wires, but that should be done. Uh, each one has got a, each set has got an inline fuse, which is there, which is 10 amps, and then of course there is a, another uh, circuit breaker at the, uh, just before and inside the boat as well. So uh, these things should be pretty okay. Before I turn the solar on, I need to make a cable to connect the solar controller with the uh, little box of gizmos <coughs> and it's one of these things you can buy these cables and it's absolutely ridiculous they're about uh, 20 quid for then just these teeny tiny little uh, four wires and uh, they're called uh, GST connectors Japan solderless uh, uh, connectors uh, things you see they're they're absolutely minute and uh, they're in a stringers because they're meant to be put on by uh, meant to be put on by machine as you can imagine uh, alternatively, there is a special, just like you can get the crimps for the for the wiring crimps, there is a special crimper. Uh, however, I really don't want to spend another you know, 30, 40 pounds for, to do a few of these. So I'm, uh, I can just about, with, it's light enough, and I, I think if I tried this in a couple of years, my eyes wouldn't be good enough, but I can just about uh, manage to, to fold the tiny little crimps around with a pair of flyers. Boy, it's fiddly, but... Uh, hopefully successful. Well we're plugged in, hooked up, and uh, there's my little lead that I've just done. And what the lead does means that uh, I can then get everything uh, sort of via the com via that little computer onto my computer or, or other things or my phone even. And so there you see there's the uh, the solar cells and even though the uh, the, the panels are, are flat and it's relatively early morning. Uh, they're still doing uh, almost half a kilowatt, which is great. 
And uh, yeah, so the other thing to do is I need to now uh, need shall and uh, now is also not now is uh, the battery still because the battery isn't a Victron product. Uh, I need to do some uh, jiggery pokery to get that working. Uh, I started last night. Uh, it, it is possible that's why I chose the model of BMS that I've got, but uh, it involves an awful lot of uh, uploading drivers to the computer, and this all is in Linux and. Uh, 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 using things that I've, I have no experience of and I've spent several, well, yeah, several, many hours last yes, yesterday, uh, late afternoon, yesterday evening, trying to get my head around it. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so that is uh, Tick. I said last time that I'd do a quick run-through of the, uh, the, the setup, which uh, uh, I know this is not uh, particularly interesting for a lot of viewers, but uh, for a few people it, it might be. Starting with the batteries, so there are these are uh, Eve two hundred and eighty amp hour uh, lithium phosphate uh, batteries, which are the safest uh, type of lithium batteries there are. They don't tend to uh, you know spontaneously bust, bust like phone batteries etc. Do which, which obviously is a good thing, and. Uh, there are to make a forty-eight volt battery, you need sixteen of those. However, I've also parallels them, so this is a a two P sixteen sixteen S, so two parallel sixteen series uh, uh, battery assembly, uh, and that then gives you uh, five hundred and sixty effective amp hours at forty-eight volts nominal, and that then actually converted into sort of real money, as it were, that most people understand. That should give me roughly about 21 kilowatts of uh, usable power from the battery, excluding the sort of the, the top and the bottom. You don't want to go to the very, very top of the charge or the very, very bottom of the charge because uh, that can uh, degrade the battery quite, uh, quite easily. Uh, and uh, I've mentioned before, this is an electric motor powered boat and the motor on average uses about three kilowatts. So just on the, for that alone, it should maybe get you a full day's cruising. Anyway, the battery then goes up to the uh, DC distribution box, which I've uh, you've seen before. Uh, this side is the positive. Uh, it goes through a, a master fuse of uh, 400 amps, and then a uh, there's a, a manual sort of isolation switch. Now here, here is the should be the DC contactor, but uh, as I mentioned in the last video, that is uh, that is not working. In fact, I think it is it's faulty. Uh, alas, that uh, because it's been in storage so long, it's out of guarantee. But I'm currently in a email dialogue with the uh, the nice man in China that uh, that makes these things. Uh, so I don't know. I've got a nasty feeling I have to buy a new one. But uh, hey ho. Uh, anyway, that's at the moment. And at the moment, it's not really. The the contactor is is meant to be for you know emergency almost stopping if it does go the battery goes too high and what I've done is as I haven't got much load at the moment I've set the uh, the settings to be very way well away from the margin so I'm uh, just continuing on without that anyway that's there and then that goes into that box which has now got a cover over it but that separates the uh, the DC into the into the several paths the uh, one on the left it goes to the inverter, and that's also got a fuse, its own fuse of 200 amps on. Uh, the one in the middle will eventually go through to the to the motor with a 300 amp fuse, and then there's a set of small DC circuit breakers, and then they uh, they connect the solar, the immersion heater, and actual the 24 volt battery charger up. Uh, and on the way back, the uh, there's the shunt there that's the, that measures the the current going in and out of the battery, so uh, say so the, the state of charge, and that's connected up to the BMS here, which uh, yes, and then you can you can see the full state of charge. Just in the corner is the grounding point because with uh, DC you have to have the uh, you you bound you bind the neutral to the uh, uh, to a to a grounding point and it should be nearest the main battery, which this is. So that's what I work, was working on for a while ago. Moving up is the uh, inverter. It's a uh, basically a five kilowatt uh, in, inverter. And this is when you get all the snakes. So meanwhile, then, for the actual uh, 230 volt AC, you can either have it coming off off the shore, or it comes through the generator, which is a it's a uh, Vitus uh, GLX 6.5 uh, uh, diesel generator, and that's in in the uh, engine area. And then there's a selector switch, which will then you select whether it comes from the uh, the shore or the generator. It goes through a uh, a circuit break of its own, and then into the into the inverter. And then if it, if you have AC power, that will then put that through straight through as almost it were. Or if not, you're inverting it as it's doing now. It's taking the DC from the batteries and converting this into 230 volts. 
It then, regardless, takes this out to the uh, little consumer unit, which is, you know, it's just like the ones you have at home, but uh, only there's only one circuit. This one's not used uh, because there is one ring. And then that goes out and through to the plugs that, uh, that you've seen. Meanwhile, up here on the roof, there are six 215 watt each uh, solar panels, which are uh, 24 volts, which gives a total of about 1.2 kilowatts when everything's working uh, perfectly. You've just seen the solar cell that goes through down into the batteries by the distribution board, and this here is the little uh, little computer as I said that can can you know, talk with everything and then gives you lots of data. And you can pro I mean I can spend <laughs> when I have got time. I, I'm not it's not I'm not an IT geek at all, but uh, there's an awful lot you can do with it and get quite quite to do fancy things. But that will be for a long time in the future. And then finally, as Wayne asked, just for the sake of completeness, so those wires uh, that you saw go off to the motor eventually, they will go onto, onto this, which is, this is the, this is the motor that will power, power the, uh, the boat. Uh, and it, so it's, and again, it's a, it's a, a Vitus, a Vitus E-Line, so it's a uh, 10 kilowatts, which uh, is the size that's, re that's required for this, uh, this size of boat. Anyway, and that's been that's been sitting in the corner of the boat since I've arrived. Hopefully, in the coming months, it will get uh, to the engine room where it belongs. Well, I think it's about. Uh, well, I know because I've just edited the video, but I'm about up to time. But just before before I go, I am I am playing about here. I'm just going to uh, try as the sun is out, uh, just to see what difference putting the uh, putting the panels up will make. So. Before the panels were lying flat just now, it was getting about 700 watts, so I'll be interested to see what the difference is tilting them towards the sun. Yes, that's made quite a difference, as you can see. It's up to about, well, almost, almost well, 40%, and you can just you can see whoop, as it's gone up. So, uh, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm, got, I'm producing way more power than I need at the moment, and the battery's practically full, so uh, it's kind of redundant. But like I said, I was uh, just having a bit of a play. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this wasn't too dry and technical for, for most people, but uh, it's absolutely great to get done. The feeling of uh, boiling the kettle or cooking my dinner and knowing the power is sort of air bunnies free is, uh, is really nice. Uh, anyway, so it's now on. Alas, I've got to tell you, we're not, out, we're not through electric yet. Uh, it's now going to move on to the uh, connecting up the 24 volt, which is the, uh, the sort of the, the system, which sounds a bit uh, a bit too glamorous. But anyway, it's the it's the voltage that powers the the interior lights and things like that. Uh, so yeah, so alas again, uh, more electrics to come, I'm afraid. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with this, and uh, I will hopefully, as I said, <laughs> catch you next time. Bye.